Yeah. All righty, guys. Look up here. Sine is opposite over hypo. How do you know that it's so? It's right there for you. Okay. Cosine is adjacent over hypo. That's ka. And then tangent is toa. So it's O over A. It's right there. That's one point total. One point total. Guys, grab. 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 Reach. Oh, good. Just, yeah. Work with it. That's one point. This one. Have. Need. Need. Do. I told you this was a have, need, do problem. If your person actually wrote out have, need, do, it is plus a half point EC. Yes. What if you just put a half, need? Yeah. I'll take it. You have at least have, need. Fine. All right. Now, here's your angle. That makes this opposite. This is adjacent. This is hypo. You guys paying attention? You guys got it? All right. Yes, sir. One point. right there. One point. We we it's one point. We have the opposite. We need the hypo. What are we gonna do? Huh? Have need do. Side of theta over one equals twenty three over x. Oh, the sine. Excuse me. That's opposite over hypo. Now, this is what gets itself one point. Is just this. If they write. Sine of 56 over 1 equals 23 over x. And put parentheses around that. That alone is the correct setup. That alone is plus 1. That setup alone is plus 1. Can, can we stay over here? Thanks. Okay, you should be correcting a paper. Now we cross multiply. Sine 56 times x equals 23. I divide both sides by sine 56. I end up with x equals 23 over sine 56. All right. To do this, I'm going to go 23 divided by 56 sine, and you get 27.7. What? Okay, 27.7. Guys, if they round, I didn't specify don't round, but for future reference, I like it round to the tenths place. But look carefully at the setup. 28, do they have the correct work? Do they have the work? Yeah. I'll take it. Guys, this correct answer is worth plus two. An extra plus two? No, it's, it's, worth, it's worth three points total. We get one point for the correct setup, one point for the correct answer. The correct setup is sine 56 over 1 equals 23 over x. Yes, Tyler? Uh, then it's zero. Okay, down here, I only wanted you to identify the angle of elevation. This, my friends, is, no, not the 35. 35 was depression. Oh, okay, that right there is the angle of elevation. That's plus one, plus one. Score out of five, it's one, three, and one. Total of five. Score out of five and return. No way. And I have to, and then it's half off. Right. Yes. No. Don't help each other. It's really important you can distinguish these by yourself. Just mark, uh, sweep, and put D for depression, and sweep and E for elevation. Okay, I'm going to show you the answer in about 20 seconds here. Elevation, depression, all four. Look at these. What fast as you can. I'll give you the answer. Look up here. There they are. The reds are the angles of depression. The blues are elevation. How many of you got all four correct? Raise your hand. All four. Good. Because I need your attention. Look up here. 
This is the most common mistake I see. If there's a storyline here and it says from the top of the Eiffel Tower, the angle of depression is 40 degrees. Okay, so listen to my storyline. From the top of the Eiffel Tower, the angle of depression is 40 degrees. The most common mistake that I get with that storyline is students will go like this. They'll mark that 40 degrees. That is not correct. Because it does not start at a horizontal and go down. It starts at a vertical and goes out. So that 40 would be in the wrong place. If I say depression, you have to draw a horizontal and sweep downward. So that's one of the main reasons why I emphasize horizontal. Because that's a common mistake. That 40 is neither an elevation or depression. All right? We need this because in today's storylines, you're going to see the word angle of elevation and depression. Go to this page three, please. Uh, no, page two. Page two. Finger track, read. Highlight, underline, draw, label, list, cross out. Finger track, read. No, I like it. I like it. Draw, label, list. What I want you guys to do, we're just on page two. No, I like All right. I'm going to give you guys two minutes, and I want you to do this on your own. Everybody, put your finger right there where it says finger. Keeping your finger on the paper, you're going to finger track and read this aloud, which means when I say go, there's going to be an explosion of mumbling. Then, I want you to go back. Highlight and underline key information. Attempt to draw. Attempt to label. Make a list of given. And then you do the cross out, which means you go back and cross out your highlights when you've accounted for it. I'm going to give you exactly three minutes to do this process. Please don't look at anybody else's paper. Ready? Finger on paper. Read. Go. <laughs> I'm going to put a timer on because we seem to be having issues with focusing. You have two minutes to now come up with a diagram that reflects the given information and you probably I'll be going over this in just a moment. 
with you so pay attention and watch how I do this now just to warn you there's going to be a test in the future where I'm going to have these little keywords oh failure to follow those keywords will actually cost you points what keywords okay dot highlight underline draw label list cross out okay so this I'm going to read it and underline at the same time work uh, contractor we're constructing a wheelchair ramp ADA guidelines say um, no more than five degrees no more more than five degrees. There's two steps. Stop, please. Thank you. It have eight inches, and we have a 18 feet. We're, we're in the hardware store. We're looking at a sheet that's 18 feet long, and we're asking ourselves, will that meet the code? So here is your diagram. I said stop. Thank you. I don't care. So, here is the house going in. We have two stairs. Each stair is eight inches, eight inches. Watch what I mean by cross out. I've taken care of two steps and eight inches. The guideline, guideline, it has to be, it has to be less than five degrees. So, whatever our angle is, it has to be less than five. So it's not. I'm not saying the angle is five, but that's the guideline. No more. No more. So I it should, be no more. It should be no more than that. Can be more. No, we're, we're checking to see if this works or not. Now our ramp that we're looking at is 18 feet. So we draw ourselves a picture. Here's 18 feet, and we're asking ourselves this: What would this angle be given that piece of metal? and whether or not that angle is less than five because you don't want to buy the metal and it's too short and then have to take it back because if you ever stand in a Home Depot line it takes an hour and a half to return something sometimes sometimes yes what's wrong with you? alright now that what I just did was that what is our target question? our target question is find angle Oh. Okay. Where's the right? Oh. Now, yeah. our right angle's right here. Now, here is a, a little trick for you guys. Here we have 16 inches. Here we have 18 feet. Repeat after me. Say this. Convert before you crunch. Say it. Convert before you crunch. Again. Convert before you crunch. One more time. Convert 
What does that mean? Convert your numbers before you crunch your numbers. So if this is inches and this is feet, you either need to go all into feet or all into inches. Take your choice. Which way do you want to go? Inches. Inches are easier. So in your calculators, 18 times 12. Let's translate this into inches, please. Yes, 216. So here is your diagram. This is 16 inches. This is 216 inches. There's your unknown degree X. What? Have, need, do. Okay, if that's our angle, we have the opposite and the hypo. We need the angle. This is the only time you use the shift key. Oh, yeah. oh. See, it says right here, equations, circle, plug, chug. So I write my equation out. It's OH, so it's sine. Inverse 1, why? Because it's an angle. Opposite over hypo gives you the angle. So write the equation out. Notice what I'm doing. All these little Q words that I'm giving you, you should follow them. Don't skip the writing of the equation. Now you're going to do physical pickup. It's sine inverse 1. Circle opposite. Go over here, circle the opposite. Now plunk it in. This seems rudimentary, but students make mistakes on this because their eyeballs just pick up all kinds of numbers. Circle the H. Circle the H. Equals angle. Okay. Now you can get your calculators out. So we are going to do 16 divided by 216. Uh -huh. And it is inverse sine because we're looking for the angle. Did you guys get 4.2? Okay. You should double check, guys. Remember, those of you with the large screen calculators, you have to put yourself in degree mode. Do you remember how to do that? 4.2. It's 4.2. Yes. It doesn't, the default's not degree mode. You have to put it in degree mode every single time. Oh, I got it. Good, 4.2. That means this angle here is 4.2 degrees is the actual, given that round, the actual angle of elevation. Ask yourself this. Is it less than 5 degrees, yes or no? Is it less than 5? Yes, then 18 feet ramp works. It does work. All right? If you make it longer, do you think that angle will decrease or increase? Correct. Therefore, if you make it shorter, if you make it shorter, it's going to... Yeah. Sometimes there's a fine line because you might not have enough... Um, you might not have enough uh, walkway to work with to make that according to ADA. Now you're... Yeah, I looked it up. Alrighty, guys. What I'd like you to do is flip to page three, please. Flip to page three. There's a typo on three I need to correct. There's a number that's missing right there. Change it to 20,000, please. Look up there, page three. Page three, I'm turning the light back on. Page three. Oh, I'm so sorry. Page four. Page four. All right. You guys have ten minutes to finish this page, although you should get it done in about five. You check your work on the board. At two o'clock, we're going to shift gears and do something else. Whatever you don't finish in class is going to become homework. But we're doing something else at the top of the hour.